All right, let's talk about costuming. Um, because today what we're going to do is we're going to make a character sheet like we talked about last week. And I will go through a lot of it with you just so you get all your stuff set up. But you have to decide what your character looks like, um, at least for your character sheet to start. After that, you can pretty much change them because, well, unless you are doing a cartoon, you know, like Adventure Time, people generally change their clothes. Uh, here you see a bunch of different versions of Iron Man. This was the one on the left that was the very first version from back in the early 60s. Then Iron Man became gold. That was the next big update that Iron Man got. Uh, you see the one from the movie, boom, it looks a lot more chunky like this. This is part of the reason that people like the Iron Man movie as opposed to all the other comic book movies that came before is even though they threw it, you know, 50 years into the future, which is the present, Okay, that's still correct. Um, they tried to st remain as close to the story as they could. And that's always a problem in Hollywood. If you veer from the story and you change it too much, it stops looking like the story that you paid all that money to own the rights to. And all the people who love that story who want to go and subsequently see the movie get really upset. Uh, Iron Man stayed pretty true to form. And plus Robert Downey Jr. Like, nailed that role. So as time went on, armor changed in the movie, you got the sleek silver. The thing with Iron Man though, everybody draws him wants to give him a different costume. He is kind of the fashion plate of the superhero world. There's ghost armor, 10 man armor, um, Hulk busting armor, under sheath armor. Uh, it gets pretty crazy. And in the movie, I believe these are all the different Iron Mans from the movie yeah spider-man of course has had the same iconic costume um up until the 80s i want to say the mid 80s is when he changed to the all black costume uh i gotta admit we're so used to seeing that costume it makes sense but it's kind of a dopey costume it's kind of like way more circus soleil than it is superhero at least by today's standards yet that's what we come to accept as spider-man in the 80s they tried to give him the black costume eventually the black costume would attack him and become venom which is probably why i never liked venom the fact that somebody could be killed by their long johns or attacked by your long johns seems like the worst plot synopsis ever but he's horribly po popular and they've made entire story arcs about venom and of course you have the iron spider armor designed by iron man uh dr strange changed quite a bit he was mostly blue and orange in the beginning then he got the cool red cape there's a point where superheroes are outlawed so he ended up with a mask which i always thought was kind of stupid i mean if everyone knows what you look like why put on the mask at that point um but just to say I must stop, stop sharing this screen. You can change your character later. All right. This will be the beginning of your character. This will be the character sheet that you'll start off with. If you have to change what they look like down the line, you'll change what they look like down the line. It's not a big deal, but you need some place to start. And sometimes that whole changing of their costume is what makes the thing interesting. You know, uh, Iron Man's armor can always updating, always gives you a little something else to be curious about. So that helps. All right, so get your paper. I'm gonna pop over to the webcam and we're gonna start up. Now, a lot of this will be very familiar to you. Because at this point, you should be pretty quick at doing the can of the human body. Or at least quicker than you were th three weeks ago, right? So I'm going to start on the far left, make sure that I'm in shot. And I'll do a head, I'll count down one, two, three. You guys follow me along with this. All right. I'm going to measure the width of the head. I'm going to use my pencil as the measuring tool. I'm going to go to the side, boom, boom. There's one shoulder, boom, boom. There's the other shoulder. All right. 
One head below the belly button, the crotch and the arms. Now, depending upon if it's male or female, maybe you want the arms to be slightly different, maybe a little more graceful, all right? As I go from the belly button down, I'm counting again, I always like to remeasure from the belly button. So I go one, two, three, four, and a half. And that's where my feet go. I can even put my legs together if I want for this one, um, because this is really just gonna be my character sheet to show everybody what my character looks like from all sides. All right. And I'll throw in a couple potatoes for hands just for the time being. Now, this is the point where you have to decide whether you have a female character or a male character. All right. So if you have a female character, perhaps now is where you want to put the hips. Um, if you have a male character, you don't have to worry about hips, right? Four bread rolls above the belly button are the first four of my six pack, two rolls below the belly button. There's the rest of my six pack. My shoulders, two bread rolls. All right, and I'm gonna give you like a second or two just to catch up there and so I can drink my coffee. Okay. Now, everything else from here on in is a teardrop. Remember, as always, I am pressing hard. You should be pressing light because you're gonna race probably most of this. You know, it's gonna have clothing on it or armor on it or something on it. I got my bicep, my bicep. My forearm, my forearm, they hit at about the space between the first set of abs and the second set of abs. Right. Now I'm going to teardrop down. My teardrops are going to cross to create my pelvic zone. So that's going to be in here. My calves are going to come down, hit my feet. And I'll triangle up my feet just to kind of give them a way to go. And since mine's a dude, I go from the abs up to the armpits and the neck will volcano down into the biceps. Now, the next part's going to be new and it's going to be real kind of important for you guys to be along with me. So I'm going to give you like a minute or so just to kind of catch up. Okay, so here's the thing. In the character sheet, any other chunk of information that you need when you need to see somebody or something from all sides, like if you are buying a car online or you go to look at a car online, they're not just going to show you one picture of it. They're going to show you the front, the top, maybe the left side, the right side, the back. They're going to open some doors, let you see inside. That's kind of where we're going with this. So we want to be able to see our character all the way around. To do this, I'm gonna throw down some guidelines. All right. So I'm gonna take my ruler or my pencil here. You know what? Unfair of me to use a ruler because I didn't tell you guys to get a ruler. But anything that's straight, like a book or a pencil or anything you got laying by you, I'm going to put down here by my feet. I'm going to try to hold still. And I'm going to draw a line. Your line will be dark, light. Mine will be dark. I will do the same thing with the top of his head or her head, depending on what you're drawing. All right. So now I know that my side view will have to go in the same proportion. All right. I'm going to take and put the pencil or my book or any other straight edge I got, or if I'm like super lucky, I got a ruler. I'm going to put it at the chin. There's where my chin is. Here's the top of my shoulder. Boom. Here's my elbow. Ooh. Fancy. Here's my wrist. And I'm just kind of lining this up, making sure that my lines are kind of parallel. Wrist, hand, knee, 
top of my foot. So I basically cited measurements for top of my head, bottom of my head, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, knee, ankle. All right, I just pulled all those lines straight to the side. So I will give you like a minute. I'll let you guys kind of get caught up. Some of you might still be looking around going, God, do I even have a straight edge? Anything you can get that will work. An extra pencil, um, like I said, a book, a magazine, uh, overtly thick piece of paper, top of Frankenstein's head from a Halloween mask. I don't care, whatever you can find. Picture frame, Ooh, that's a good one. Now, luckily, when it comes to draw the head from the side, we've had a little bit of practice with that. We went through the canon of the human head, profile, and three-quarter view. So this will be a direct profile, will be the next thing that we will be doing. And what's interesting about profile on the human body is when a body is standing still in one position in profile and you're looking directly at it, you really only have to draw one arm, one leg, one foot, one hand. You actually draw about half the body, but you have to draw it slightly different. It has to be facing a direction, right? Because we know what the profile looks like from the side. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw my head to the side. And this time, I'm gonna kind of take that egg shape, I'm gonna slant it. I know there's a circle here. I know that if I put the square in the bottom left side, I will get the face pointing toward that head, All right? I know I have a soft red roll here for a shoulder. I know that my bicep comes off that bread roll. I know that my forearm comes off that bicep. And I know at the end of that wrist, I have a hand. So, so far in about 15, 20 seconds, I've drawn a head pointed in the right direction. I've done a shoulder, bicep, forearm and a bread roll and i'll give you like a minute to get caught up with that while i go find out why my dog is barking now when i go cut this down into a video later i am going to take out all these pauses so if you need to go back and re-watch this um you know stop the video if you if you're like i don't remember this when you get to the part where you're like that's the part i forgot just stop the video continue on after you've got it drawn all right Okay, so here's the part that gets a little funky. I'm gonna have a booty here. Oh my God, that's a big booty. That's an exorbitantly big booty for a superhero. Maybe I need to shrink that booty down. Um, okay, chest comes out, shoulder blades come out. neck attaches. So this you're going to have to kind of play a little loose with until you kind of feel around and get that side. I got my thigh. Luckily I know that drawing a calf from the side is way easier. So that one I got pretty good. Let me get that back curve of the foot. He's got extra booty. Let's see if I can find an eraser that still functions as an eraser. All right, so now I basically have the can of the human body from the front and the can of the human body from the side, looking toward the front. I got to get the back. Guess what? The back's going to be a lot like the front. And this time, I actually have everything kind of planned out. The only difference is, you see how I made the abs there? I didn't really need to make those. See how the shoulders come out? Shoulders I will need. Wrists I will need. Elbows I will need. 
forearms. But instead of having a crotch, we end up with a butt. And usually we have the V of the back. So once I've got that, I don't really need these abs. I mean, I guess you could draw them in there if you need to feel like, how big is that gonna be? How wide is that space? Um, but they're not all that necessary. You could, depending upon the tightness of the costume, put the shoulder blades in. You can do that kind of thing. Maybe get the small of the back if you like. I could have drawn the sticks for the legs, but I'm kind of on a roll here. All right. So drawing the back of the body is actually even a little simpler than drawing the front of the body because you got less detail. When is this due? I think we're going to do two days of the character sheet. That's where I think we're going with this. Because what I'm hoping is when you guys fill out this character sheet, when you make your character, whatever they look like, if they're unicorn man, when I start assigning you guys panels, like let's say I do the draw unicorn man or your character, whatever it is, in a um, foreshortening view, you know, maybe they're reaching toward you. Uh, then that way I will start to recognize your character. You know, hopefully you will start drawing that character more and more and you will get better at drawing this character. So we're really looking for this to be finished at the end of the week. Now, if this was, um, I'm gonna let you guys work on this for a week before you send it to me. So that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, yeah, cause not only are we gonna put the body in there, we're gonna do the three sides of the head all right, and then we're going to have two action poses. So this whole thing together is going to have the front, the side, the back, and the side. Two action poses, three heads. Well, these are practice, but you could also, if you do this and you feel good about it, you can just draw your character on top of it. Or let's say you made the mistake of drawing too dark. Because right now, you know, if you're concentrating... It's really hard to get yourself to draw light when you are deep in concentration, if you're really, you know, fighting with this, with the drawing. What I would do at that point is I would throw my paper on top of this one, my second paper, maybe hold it up to a window, trace it lightly, and then go ahead and put your clothes and your costume on top of this. All right. But if you're doing it light from the get go, you can just draw your character on top of here. Right. Because I'm going to assume that your character won't be naked because that's a no-no. I will also assume you're not going to be able to see the character's bones. So we got to, you know, we got to get to the point where we can leave those out. All right. Side view, other direction. So I got one side heading to the left. I'm going to do this side pointing to the right. Once again, I know that my shoulders are here. I know my bicep is here. I know my forearm is here. I know my hand is there. I know my booty is here. Heck, I can see my booty curve from the other one. Thigh, thigh, calf, calf, foot. Chest back yeah. I need a bigger circle for his head mm -hmm. All right. so now what I've accomplished here is I've done the can of the human body from all four directions all right two sides left and right front and back so I'm gonna give you a minute or so I'm gonna let you guys get caught up on that And then we're going to start laying out real simply the heads. Now, for each head, I want you to do a different expression. So each head is going to be your character, but maybe it's going to be your character angry. Maybe it's going to be your character sad. Maybe it's going to be your character um, laughing. 
or just being depressed or giving a sly knowing glance to somebody. If you go online and hit images and you put expressions, cartoon expressions or superhero expressions, you'll get whole pages of things. Um, actually some really, really good information. And that's how we learn to draw comic books. I mean, we steal what we like off each artist. One artist, you might like the way they draw elf ears. All right. Uh, I did that. I stole Wendy Penny's elf ears for 20 years. And then I went, you know what? I'm going to come up with my own way to draw it. And I did, you know, but I can whip out an, a Wendy Penny elf ear like that. I can do eyes in her style. I can do noses. Um, but there are also things like, you know, other comic book artists who I stole stuff from. John Byrne was another one. The Wolverine, Snarly Mouth, stole that from him. Uh, the Pixie Nose, stole that from him. So that's all kinds of stuff that you should probably start thinking about. All right, so let's talk about doing those heads since we're sitting here. Okay, so my heads are going to be a little bit bigger because I like to draw my heads a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do a front view. Boom, boom. I'm going to use my rule of halves. Boom, boom. There's the cannon for my front. I'm going to do a side view here. Or a three-quarter view, my bad. And it's going to be a three-quarter view, kind of looking down. Nose, mouth, face. Boom. My ear goes to here, eye goes up here. Boom, boom. Boom. All right. And then my other face is going to be a profile. This time I'm going to have my profile looking up. Why am I going to have my profile looking up? Because uh, I haven't done it yet. Maybe my profile looking up is going to be yelling. So if that's the case, I might put in some of the information ahead of time. All right. So now every head that we practice, I've got on the side. Whoops. Let's try it with this one instead. Um, yeah, you guys will not have to send me any of this until your details are on top of it. What I've essentially done with you is go through four sides of the body, three different head views, you get to add your own details over the top. And when you're done, you get to put two action poses in this as well. Maybe not on a separate sheet of paper because um, you're not going to have room here. So yeah, it, it shouldn't be that hard because if you've been following along in class, we've gone through all the steps, right? We've got the body. We've got the left side. We've got the right side. We've got the back. We've got the head from the front. We got the head from the three quarter. We got the head from the side. And then eventually you guys are going to get to pick out your two poses um, that you're going to use for your two action poses for this character sheet. And if you were doing a cartoon character sheet, what would happen is you would do the shapes and the, the canon of that cartoon character. Because like if you've ever seen uh, the Powerpuff Girls, right? they're not in human proportion. I think they're like two and a half heads tall or maybe three at tops. Um, so if that would be another step that would be added to that if we weren't keeping to human proportions. But we're definitely gonna keep at least this character to human proportions. Yes, you'll need four sides of the human body, which we just did, except you're gonna add your details on it. And then you're gonna get two poses of your character. So it might be a fighting pose, it might be a flying pose, it might be a ninja pose, uh, it might be 
Heck, if you put him on a, a, a floaty in the middle of a swimming pool, that would be funny. You know, it would still count as a pose. Or maybe they're in a Denny's eating a uh, Rudy Tooty fresh and fruity breakfast. You know, a po uh, maybe they're taking a selfie. How about a superhero taking a selfie? What if Superman, every time he was about to save somebody, was like, hold up, click, click. Okay, um, so I'm going to do real quick just two poses. As you can tell, I did took up the majority of my paper here. So my last two poses for my character sheet, I'm just going to do on a separate sheet of paper. I will use the can of the human body. Start with the head. Maybe have the shoulders like this. Maybe he'll be pointing. Da, da, da. One, two, three is the belly button. Four is the crotch. Is my ice arm swing far enough? Yep. Uh, ab, 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 ab. Now, luckily, I've drawn him large enough. He's going off the page a little bit. Because the thing that you guys will probably not realize about most comic book characters is you usually don't see their entire body in every frame. Sometimes it's rare to see their entire body even during a fight. Well, my head is a little low. Need some shoulders. This shoulder will point this way. Here, here. There's my finger. Boom, boom. Couple fingers here. And maybe a three quarter view on this head. Have him actually looking in the direction of where he is pointing. So, what I would do, like you already know how to steal images offline, I would go online, find a pose that you feel best suits your character at least when you get done with all the other ones, and then draw that pose. And then you should be in pretty good shape. I mean, you'll do two, but just, just do that pose, throw your, you know, throw your details on top. Does he wear a hat? Put that hat in each drawing. Uh, does he have gloves? Well, put those gloves in each drawing that would show his hands, right? Does he have two ram horns on either side of his head like Daniel Radcliffe did in that movie Horns? Draw those horns. Bat wings. When you can see them, you draw them. But if he doesn't, you know, if you're just doing faces, you don't have to add the bat wings. All right. Any questions on any of that? Anybody? All right, cool. Um, if you think of something, send me an email. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good week. Try to add your details up by then uh, because you'll probably be looking for poses on Wednesday. All right. All right, guys. Have a good day. Stay out of trouble. If you can't stay out of trouble, don't get caught. <laughs>